Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and in our continuing series on uh, WPF on PowerShell we're going to be taking a quick look at run spaces. Uh, when I say quick, actually it's going to be a two-parter. So this is the first episode on uh, run spaces. As usual, we're going to start in Visual Studio. And I have done a super simple little GUI here. We have a text block. We have a text box and we have a button. Uh, text box obviously to take input and text block to show it. So super simple. All right, so let's have a look in uh, VS Code. And we've set up an event where we uh, do something on the click of the button. And that something is we're gonna start sleep so the reason why we're doing something as simple as start sleep because effectively what that's going to mean is it's going to mean exactly the same as uh, any other process that's taking a long time. So say you could be deploying OVF to a hypervisor, you could be reading a large file, there's all kinds of stuff that you can be doing that um, uh, would take a certain amount of time. And we're just doing this so we can figure the amount of time that, uh, that uh, is taken by a process in the background. And then we're just going to tell the text block that uh, we finished our sleep. So effectively, we're going to give an output back to the GUI. Um, and that's about it. So let's have a look at what we're doing here. All right. We can see. And if we do start sleep for one second, and we get the result. Perfect. Now, right now, as we can see, we can move that min window around. We can resize it. That all looks great. So what happens if I just do a 10 second sleep and we start now. Now I stop being able to move this window around. I also stop being able to resize it in any way. And effectively that, until that's finished, that application is hung. So the UI is completely unresponsive to any user input, be that in a text box, so let's let's try that. Just do five, and we'll start sleep, and we can't click in the text box. Basically, Windows regards that application as hung, and to your users it will look hung as well. If that continues on for a sufficient amount of time, that application will go not responding. So this is obviously a bad thing for an application. We do not want our applications to hang like that. So what's the reason for it? Effectively, whilst this sleep is happening. That thread that PowerShell is running for the UI is not returning control. It can't do anything else. So the single threadedness of a script is effectively what's stopping our UI from uh, being responsive. So what's the answer to this? Well, why don't we do a second thread? Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is use uh, jobs. Now, you can either do the start job command or certain commands uh, will have an as job parameter, which will effectively run the job in the background. Now, for a single task, jobs are great for this. Um, but the trouble with them is that when you do start job, it effectively loads a new PowerShell instance to host that job. So another complete process of PowerShell along with all the .NET libraries, etc., etc., And it's quite slow and it's quite resource intensive. It's not massive. I mean, resource is fairly cheap nowadays on PCs, but it's something you should uh, bear in mind. Um, the other way to do multi-threading is run spaces. And run spaces just start a new thread on the existing PowerShell process which is much, much faster and uh, more efficient in terms of resources. So how do we launch a run space? Well, what we need to do is we need to first create a run space object, add it to a PowerShell object, and then open it up. So let's see what that looks like. Let's just do that. And now we can see in the after the add click event, we've got the ability to create a run space. Let's have a look what that looks like here. 
and as we can see we've got a run space object we've got a couple of interesting we've got a couple of events here that we can subscribe to um, state change and availability change if we need to do that and then let's have a look at the PowerShell object all right good and you can see that uh, run space we've got the ability to set the run space so let's set the run space let's open it now if we do get run space now and um, I've got some old run spaces uh, which are just hanging around I should probably close some of those off All right, I just pause for a second there to clean up, uh, clean up those run spaces. So now, if we do get run space, we can see that in VS Code we've got three run spaces. Um, I had a chat with the developer of the PowerShell uh, plugin for VS Code. It says that um, once for the host, once for the PS Script Analyzer, and once for the console. Fair enough. If we have a look in just the uh, normal. We can see that we've got one run space open, which is the console that we currently have there. And I think that's the same in, yep, it's the same in the IC as well. All right, so if we go back here, start this again. Now, if we do get run space, now we can see we've just created a new run space and it's open and available. And we're going to add this script into the uh, run space, which is the same script we had before. And then let's see. So remember, we've already clicked the button. All right, so let's have a look in our application. Okay, so we don't have any return here. So something's not working, even though we've run this script in a new run space. So one of the tricks we can do is we can add a wait debugger line here, which means that it will stop at that line and wait for you to attach a debugger. So let's do this again. F5 through there. Now I'm actually going to attach from the IC. There's no real reason that I'm doing this from the IC as part from that I'm keeping my debug environment and the, the environment that I'm running the script from in two separate applications just so I know which one's which really easily. So if we have a look at uh, get PS host process info we can see that uh, we have one PowerShell process with the main window title of main window which is the one we've put in our Visual Studio project. So we're going to find that main window. We're going to go enter into that host process, which is 2628. 2628 matches there. OK. Now if we do get run space, now we can see that we've got a run space in breakpoint. So let's enter that one. All right. And now we can see we're stopped at the uh, start sleep. So now we can step through with F10. Uh, through the uh, through the commands inside that run space. I, if I wasn't if I was uh, doing it from a, from the the original uh, PowerShell prompt, I wouldn't need to enter the PS host process, but uh, I am from here. Ah, red text. So it didn't like that variable. So if we have a look what's in there nothing's in there what's in WPF nothing's in WPF all right so the problem appears to be that the WPF variable which contains all of our UI objects is not available in this run space so if we have a look yeah so we now we can't set the text block text to whatever we want because again it's not available in this run space exit out of there okay so what should we do about this well what we'll do 
is first off we're going to create a synchronized hash table this means that it will update across uh, all the run spaces when we change anything in it so instead of WPF I'm putting everything in this sync hash variable I forgot to mention at the start as per usual everything all the code will be available on uh, github we have a new line in our setup of the run space which is effectively uh, the initial session state had adding a variable of sync hash or synchronized hash table uh, variable into the um, into the object and we again we've got the wait debugger here so that um, we can uh, have a look so let's cancel this one and let's run our new one where we should have our synchronized hash table now let's enter that again let's enter the uh, run space and again we stopped at start sleep so let's just just check what's in sync hash excellent all right so now we have inside our run space access to all of the uh, UI objects we've previously created good stuff so ah what's happening now we're still even though we've got that um, uh, even though we've got that object there so let's have a look so there's our text box object but if you look at text it's blank so even though we have got our objects into the other thread now we've got a problem of ownership because they're running two completely different security contexts and the previous UI thread owns this object so this UI thread can't go and read from it or change it as we'll see if we do the next one now we can't change it either so in fact we've got an excellent error calling thread cannot access the object because a different thread owns it okay fair enough let's go back to our code let's close the application first go back to the code all right so we've got exactly the same but now what I've done is on the uh, on the click of the object so on the event we're putting the contents of the text box into a variable which is synced across both so because this is a synchronized hash table I can change this and I can read it from both threads so I'm just swapping this variable into a place where I can read it and then instead of reading it directly from there we're reading it from the synced hash variable and again in the output so let's see how we do here we've got the wake debugger in as well so we can see what's happening inside so let's do start sleep and let's go back and then uh, we'll go back into uh, the run space okay so now what does what's in sync hash sleep specs sleep sex even one perfect so this sleep should now work which it did excellent all right <coughs> what about setting the text box up te text we know that that uh, now that's one so that's correct but did it work no we do not have that all right because we still got the problem with the thread calling the object uh, is not uh, is not the owner of that object so let's have a look at this So building it up now so now we know that um, 
I'll start sleep works. And we want to change this to something that does work. So in this case, we're going to use the dispatcher on that uh, text block object. Now, remember that text block object is now into the inside the run space because it's inside the sync hash. All right. We're going to use the dispatcher to invoke the action on this. So it's a way to get around effectively the thread security. So let's close the application. This time we'll run it. Now we haven't got the wait debugger in it, so it will just uh, go through. Ah, now it works. Brilliant. So effectively, we're going to be using the dispatcher to uh, make the changes in another thread. I'm going to have a look at this command because there is a problem with using the dispatcher. Now, this problem may or may not matter to you depending on uh, how many times you're you're updating your your UI. If it's just something to display and maybe your process takes 10 minutes then an extra bit of time uh, for the dispatcher to work is not a big problem. But let's have a look and see how much time it actually is. And let's again, let's get into this run space so we can have a look at Total milliseconds to run the dispatcher, 292. That's quite a lot, so that's almost a third of a second. As I say, you know, if your if your command takes ten minutes and you're taking a third of a second to report the results back to your UI, that's fine. But if you're looking at doing something like a progress bar and you decided that you're going to increment your progress bar by a thousandth of the total length each time to make it look nice and smooth and your process is quite quick then you're going to do a, a dispatch or invoke a thousand times so a thousand times 292 milliseconds is almost five minutes so say if your process takes 30 seconds, just by doing this, you're going to be adding five minutes onto, um, onto your, your UI, onto the job time before you report back anything useful to the UI. What we'll have a look at next time is some more detail on run spaces. Some of the available modules um, to help out so you don't have to write the uh, threading code yourself. And if we get time, we'll also have a look at the progress bars in the way we were just talking about. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much.